let's look at our second example and we have the following y equals negative open bracket 2x plus 1 close bracket to the power of 3 times x minus 3 so they, they're asking us the same thing to sketch the corresponding graph once again you have your grid there um, I'm just gonna do a rough sketch so let's figure out the degree of this function well we know here that if we were to expand this of course it's telling us there it's to the degree of 3 but we have another x too so if we were to bring this x into this cubic function we're going to end up with x to the power of 4 so this function has a degree of 4 okay so it's an even function all right now the leading coefficient what is the leading coefficient okay so for the leading coefficient what we do is we for the leading coefficient we um, we multiply the coefficients in front of the x value so we know here we have one here we have two however this two is inside this cubic function so what we need to do is we multiply um, 2 to the power of 3 times 1 and let us not forget this negative one as well which you know, if we were to expand this this is also part of that so times uh, negative 1 so the answer for this would be negative 8 Okay, now let's look at the end behavior. We know it's an even degree function with a negative leading coefficient. So, even degree, negative leading coefficient. So, we know it's going to move from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. So, we can write this down. Quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. Let's look at these zeros. So, here we have, we can solve for x on that one. So, we get x equals to um, negative 1 over 2 and we can say order of 3 and the other x-intercept would be positive 3 what is the y-intercept? well let x equal 0 so here we get 1 and here we get negative 3 1 times negative 3 negative 3 times the other negative it gives you positive 3 so 3 would be this, uh, would be our y-intercept, and to be more specific, it's 0, comma, 3. Okay, now we should create a table to figure out the intervals of this function. So just like the previous example, we do the following. Um, we can do, we can write an interval here. Okay, let me get a better marker. We can write interval and then sine of f of x. And now we got to figure out what the intervals are. Well, the uh, x-intercepts can help us to do that. So let's start with that. Let's start with um, negative infinity all the way to uh, negative 1 over 2. And in fact, even if if it seems a little difficult to figure out the intervals um, even before making the table it's probably a good idea to simply do a rough s a sketch here so we know that okay the x-intercepts are is this one negative 1 over 2 and the other one is 3 so let's put it somewhere over here okay so then we can figure out what the intervals that, that we need to figure out. So from negative infinity all the way all the way to negative one over two. So that's one interval. Then we need to figure out the other interval, negative one over two to three. Negative one over two all the way to three. And then from three all the way to infinity. So from three all the way to positive infinity. Okay. So let's see how this function behaves. Well, and let's write down, just as a reference and just so that I won't have to move it up or down, um, the function, right? 2x plus 1 cubed times x minus 3. Okay, let's see how this function behaves. So, any values to the left of negative 1 over 2, well, let's choose negative 1. I think it will be the easiest one. So what happens if we put negative 1 here? We get 
negative 2 plus 1 is still negative when you um, to the power of 3 it will remain as negative negative is negative positive okay so we end up with a positive value here how about negative here so this becomes negative so negative times positive gives you negative so to the left of this we know that the function is going to be coming down from somewhere all right okay we also know that the x-intercept is 3 so we can keep that in mind so that will be our x-intercept we can do this rough sketch right here of the x-intercept let me actually do this with uh, red that's our x-intercept so somehow um, something's gonna happen there okay let's see between negative uh, 1 over 2 and 3 okay well we know it's gonna be positive so um, if you're not sure you can put any value between the, this range and it will still give you a positive so right you can put zero and this whole thing becomes positive okay and now from 3 to uh, positive infinity so let's give it 4 right so we get 8 plus 1 um, gives us 9 9 to the power of 3 um, I don't know, some big number, I think is 243. In any case, you multiply times the negative here, you end up with a negative here. And 4 minus 3, you end up with a positive here. So positive times negative gives you a negative. All right, so we know that after that point, our function is going to calm down. All right, so we don't know where. So this somewhat, um, well not somewhat, actually it makes sense because we can see here that it starts from quadrant 3 and it ends in quadrant 1, alright. The only thing to figure out would be how high does it go, right, 1, 2, 1, 2, right. So what you can do is you can substitute it, the values there. Uh, here we know it's going to look like that. And, you know, if a, this is equal to 1, let's see, 2 times 1, 2 plus 1 gives us 3, 3 to the power of 3, um, 27, that's negative 27, and uh, 1 minus 3 gives us minus 2, so uh, a very high value. Actually, I think I messed up in the calculations here. So, um, yes, okay, so anyway, substitute the values, and... Um, yes, yeah, so once again, okay, so 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 times 3, 9, times 3, 27, so it's negative 27 there, and you put 1 here, you get negative 2, so negative 27 times negative 2, that's positive, positive 54, okay, so at 1 it goes, it starts increasing very rapidly, so it goes all the way up, now what happens when you put 2? 2 times 2, 4, plus 1, 5, 5 to the power of 3 is 125, negative 125, um, 2 minus 1, uh, 2 minus 3 gives us minus 1, so negative is negative, positive, so positive 125. So, wow, so this thing starts going up really quickly. It's a rough sketch. I hope you can see it there. But you can make it look better on your handout. Um, that's all. Let me know if you have any questions.